My greatest thanks to you, Merle, for your great, great help in recruitment process of finding participants into focus groups, these discussions from different countries. And I would also like to thank everybody who uh, participated in this recruitment process. This was not the very easy work. And uh, by this meaning, you who participated in the uh, recruitment process and in the discussions, you are all a big, big part in this study. And so I can say partners in crime. Uh, online meetings were conducted from August to uh, October this year. And I think that uh, all participants uh, remember how we started. The aim of our today's conversation is to map your experience and lessons you learned in course of preventing the domestic violence during coronavirus pandemic. We need to write a report on the results we learned here in the discussion groups. I can't remember everything you talk here, so may I turn on recording? I got the permission, and so I am here in front of you and with all your interesting and uh, useful information we learned from your stories and recommendations. In the title, the term gender-based violence was used. But in the study, in general, we used the expression domestic violence, which includes all types of close relationship of violence, physical, psychological, mental, economic, and also violence against children. What did we speak about and what was found out? During the corona pandemic, some changes were made to law and regulations regarding domestic violence because of pandemic. But several law changes were made during pandemic not because of pandemic. In some countries, it was not necessary to make changes to the law because the necessary legislation already existed before the corona time. Both regular and new channels could be used to report domestic violence. You spoke how the service for victims of domestic violence were organized during pandemic. You talked about your experiences, worries and happy moments in your field of work. And you described how cooperation with your, partner, with your partners went and uh, how it was in networks. It was not easy to find a time for conversation suitable for all potential participants. We had to keep in mind that specialists from at least four main fields were represented in all countries' groups. The police and prosecutor's office, women's shelter, crisis and consultation center, and child protection specialists. We were able to cover all four necessary areas in one discussion group only in two countries, in Iceland and in Estonia. In all other countries, it was necessary to conduct two to three discussion groups. Changes in regulations of social sphere and in the sphere of criminal law. It is seen here how specialists of different countries perceived law changes made during the pandemic. Of course, this slide does not present any official statistics. And I need to remind you, we conducted a qualitative study. We are not presenting numbers nor percentages. And this slide and all the the following ones just illustrate the attitudes and opinions of the specialists who participated in prevention of domestic violence during COVID-19 and how the participants in our discussion groups perceived the situation 
and changes during the pandemic. Speaking about law changes in social sphere, in the Norwegian group, it was said that women shelter workers and specialists were defined as frontline workers who got priority for vaccination and possibility to send their children to school and kindergarten. In Estonia, volunteers were allowed to undergo shorter trainings in crisis situation. New volunteers were badly needed and very quickly. In Latvia, from 2020, all official advisors had the right to provide services online. Similar changes were probably made in other countries as well, but these law changes were most clearly expressed in the groups of Norway, Estonia and Latvia. Law changes in social sphere that were made during pandemic, but not because of pandemic. In Sweden, in 2021, an amendment was made to the Social Service Act, which obliges the social service to take measures to help perpetrators in their violence. In Lithuania, a new accreditation system for specialist support centers was established with the aim to guarantee better quality service. Changes in the field of criminal law mainly included the legislation of digitized work to speed up work and help victims faster. In Norway and in Lithuania, new regulations made it possible to carry out court proceedings using the electronic technologies. In Iceland, the police could conduct proceedings online and it was considered legal. In Estonia, the police were given the right to treat digitally signed letters as official documents. In Latvia, a police officer could make a decision to separate the criminal on his own initiative without a written report from the victim. Channels and methods that were used to report domestic violence. The same possibilities and ways to report domestic violence as before pandemic were used. Societies were not that closed that it was not possible to go to the police or to the crisis center. Women's support centers were reached through the police or through victim support specialists or healthcare system. Child abuse could be reported through school system, via child protection specialists, or via women's shelters. But when schools were closed, reports of domestic violence against children decreased. Main changes in the reporting channels were new and wide possibilities, online possibilities, new helplines with widened options, calling plus sending text messages. More police patrols on the streets and more leaflets in public places encouraged victims to make face-to-face -face contacts with help providers. Several information campaigns were carried out directed to different target groups to inform them how to recognize domestic violence and how could victims report domestic violence? Impact of the amount of information campaigns on frequency of reporting domestic violence. Of course, there are several reasons why reporting domestic violence increased or decreased during different periods of pandemic and there is also a lot of lack of knowledge why the frequency of reporting varied. But cognitively, it was felt that one reason for more or less reporting might have been the amount of corresponding information available for the victims of domestic violence. Several types of information campaigns were carried out. 
There are campaigns that remind it to call the helpline number in case of emergency. There are campaigns directed to the neighbors and people around problematic families to call the police if they noticed violence. There were campaigns targeted to people of foreign origin who did not speak local language. Some campaigns were directed to professionals, municipalities, and healthcare sector. Practical type of campaigns taught women to use specific emergency numbers. On TV, videos were shown that focused on different types of domestic violence, sexual, physical, psychological violence, and in videos, real victims who had experienced violence were used, and they shared their own stories. In general, it was difficult to rate the increase or decrease in reporting of domestic violence because the situation changed over time. Different institutions received reports in different amounts. The number of reports was different from region to region. But cognitively, again, the main thing that was brought out was the more co corresponding information, the more reports and visits to help providers were noticed. In case of Finnish group, we saw a small contradiction. In Finnish groups, several concrete information campaigns which had been carried out during uh, the pandemic were named. Yet, the decrease in reporting violence was felt. As a justification for that, it was pointed out that Finns are calm and patient people. Victims of domestic violence think that their problems may not be so important that frontline workers should deal with their personal matters during the pandemic. Or perhaps campaign information did not reach victims. Perhaps not right channels were used to reach the target groups. In discussions of different countries, it was repeatedly emphasized that no media monitoring nor campaign visibility checks had been carried out. No. General service organization during pandemic and basic changes in provision of services. It was tried to offer as many face-to-face -face services as possible but the majority of services still went to telephone and online. Online consultations were conducted on Zoom, WhatsApp, Skype platforms, and first of all, of course, it was necessary to find out if the woman's life was not in danger at home and if she could communicate freely via telephone or internet. Social rehabilitation programs with accommodation for victims of domestic violence, both for men and women continued. Before crisis, volunteers usually worked in the shelters in the evenings. During pandemic, mainly shelters employees worked themselves. It was precisely calculated how many hours it was necessary to devote each woman in the shelter in order to know how many workers should be kept at work at a time. Primarily severely traumatized victims were served and lighter cases had to wait. If possible, crisis centers conducted face-to-face -face meetings in the open air or at cooperation partners' bigger premises. Police officer did a lot of work over telephone, but the result was that they didn't reach all people in need at pandemic time and they were not as close to victims as they used to be. Even a certain alienation was felt because of the lack of face-to-face -face contacts. Satisfaction with additional funding for provision services during pandemic. 
in the condition of pandemic, friendly attitude of colleagues and their help in most difficult situations was very important, but financial support was also needed. While the Nordic countries were more or less satisfied with the financial support given the, to them, the Baltic countries felt that they had been supported too little. In the groups of Iceland, Denmark, Norway and Sweden, it was pointed out that different service providers received additional financial support to create and maintain their digital service systems. Women's shelters roof organizations couldn't say that they had received too much extra money for their hard work, but the funding that they got from the government's government to distribute to the shelters made the situation much better. And it was very good that government mandated state grant could be distributed to nonprofit organizations working with children. Finland was a bit less satisfied than other Nordics. Women's centers didn't receive sufficient additional funding, though they had applied for funding. At least, it was good that when the crisis center's electronic database was attacked by cyber criminals who stole customer data and started blackmailing customers and service providers, additional funding was found to strengthen the security systems. In Estonia, the police did not receive an additional manpower nor additional funding. The only help, specialists were provided with personal protective equipment and private sector helped with coffee and chocolate. The Latvian private sector helped women shelter so much that an additional shelter could be opened in a problematic area of the country. In Lithuania, the police found that their more enthusiastic work was hindered by the knowledge that professionals were not treated equally. Some services received more money than others. No. This slide shows the most frequently men mentioned practices and experiences that professionals received in identifying and supporting victims of, uh, of domestic uh, violence during the pandemic. Mm. Child protection specialists could solve problems via video conference or phone in case the child was at certain age already. At first, it was afraid that remote method would not work well, but online communication turned out to be quite successful. Child protection specialists still prefer to meet children face to face. This method creates more close relationships. When children attended online school, the signs of abuse were not often seen and child protection specialists were of the opinion that the decision to transfer the school to distance learning was not the best decision. Children's mental health worsened. It was very difficult to open them up when they reached the therapist at last. Some violent parents used corona to justify their violent behavior. Children were not allowed to be vaccinated because parents did not believe in vaccines. Despite of the increase in domestic violence, fewer children reach child psychologists and child shelters. Child protection specialists working on the local authorities were behind closed doors for too long time. They met the children too early and didn't send children to the psychologists quickly enough. 
law enforcement specialists learn to work digitally. If possible, the police used internet-based platforms through which the victim could seek for help fast and easily from several professionals at a time. The use of internet platforms gave victims better overview of the course of events than the, the information that they received over the telephone. Victim support specialists were at the center of the battlefield during the pandemic. Women's shelters didn't tell even the victims themselves where the particular, particular hotel or shelter was where the victim would be taken. Shelters had security companies to support them in keeping the addresses of shelters secure. The specialists in shelters had to keep physical distance in the room, which diminished emotional closeness with the victims. It was difficult to work with disabled people. For example, if the victim with hearing limitation needed to be questioned by the police, Women's Support Center specialists tried to accompany the police to support the victim who didn't understand the police when he spoke behind his face mask. Now a few words about removing perpetrator from home. The biggest difference between the Nordic and Baltic countries appeared in this issue. In the Baltic countries, it was considered that it is right to take the criminal away from home. Why do victims have to leave their homes against their will? There is a corresponding le legislation on the basis of which criminals were removed from homes. In the Nordic countries, the opinion was that the victim should go to women's shelter. It is not possible to keep criminals away from home. They just come back and they are still dangerous. Why hasn't the law concerning removing perpetrator from home been implemented? Maybe the legislators are not well aware of how much crime is actually going on behind closed doors. How many women suffer from domestic violence? Criminals also need help. And related laws have been already adopted in several countries. And the prov provision of help to perpetrators has expanded. Main danger points and difficulties in work of specialists. The difficulties encountered during the pandemic could be divided into five different areas. Concerns related to personnel, concerns related to victims, concerns related to technology, psychological problems, and lack of information. Close relation violence decreased outdoors and increased indoors. Domestic violence was concentrated in certain areas. More reports of domestic violence came from certain parts of the cities. For example, from these areas where more alcohol and drugs were consumed and from areas where ethnic minorities live. Violence against elderly relatives in the family increased. The unemployed family members demanded money from their retired family members, from pensioners. Cognitively, it seemed that the growth of psychological violence was bigger than the growth of physical violence. And it was grounded like that first. Domestic violence also appeared in families where it had not occurred under normal conditions. And initially, it was limited to a war of words without physical violence. Second, people have begun to understand better 
that mental violence is also violence. And third, children reported psychological violence on internet. And this is our last topic, cross-sectoral or cross-disciplinary cooperation. The police were allowed to listen to parliamentary debates via internet. This way, they had the opportunity to participate in the process of making the best decisions. As healthcare institutions and pharmacies were open all the time and people visited these institutions, the police left flyers there with necessary information and phone numbers. The police cooperated with non-governmental organizations dealing with victim assistance. These employees of NGOs started calling the victims of violence and gave the police an overview of the addresses from which domestic violence occurred. Crisis centers often had to cooperate with IT specialists because their work had largely gone online and it was necessary to ensure security. One of the biggest problems for women's shelters was the accommodation in COVID situation. They even contacted sports clubs and other facilities and establishments that had accommodation, accommodation places. As sports clubs and other entertainment facilities were closed during the pandemic, sometimes these clubs offered themselves their accommodation possibilities. Child protection specialists cooperated with child psychologists before difficult court hearings, and private companies gave gifts to children in crisis centers. Main risk points in cross-disciplinary cooperation. And here these are brought out. Digital communication communication with state institutions, lack of cooperation caused by individualistic attitude of contact persons in enterprises, local governments being closed too long during the pandemic. Domestic violence was not the highest priority during COVID, specialists felt so, and lack of knowledge meaning no one knew how long it lasts and how serious it is. Specialists would have expected more effective support from the government in the organization of cooperation between different sectors. For example, women's shelters had to use a lot of their own resources to figure out how things must work during pandemic. They would have liked that the umbrella organizations and the state had given them more information on how to behave right. Women shelters also complained that people started to call them with all kinds of social problems because local authorities were closed. Some hotels refused to accommodate infected people. How professionals felt uh, how they were supported during the pandemic. Participants in the Icelandic group said that actually in Iceland there are no laws on the basis of which domestic violence prevention and victim assistance must be dealt with. Everything is done on the basis of mutual agreement and goodwill. And during pandemic it was felt that everybody cooperated when needed, and this gave the feeling that you are very well supported. In Finnish groups, it was stressed that though from governmental institutions more non-monetary than financial assistance was received, but all essential services could be kept open. Concrete instructions helped to structure the work Every institution knew his responsibilities. And thanks to sharing on, of information, 
many training sessions for volunteers could be conducted. In the Norwegian group, it was mentioned that many things exist on paper, but in real life, they do not work. Schools and medical facilities know the problems, but the problems are not solved quickly enough. The Swedish group brought out that women's shelter specialists would have liked that their opinion had been asked more and taken into account before bigger decisions were made. The policemen were supported in their work. They were given specific instructions how to act in corona situation. But they would like that their managers had sometimes simply asked, how are you? Is everything okay? Is your mother better now? Did you find your dog? In the Danish and Lithuanian groups, it was stressed that people can work very hard for a while, but they can't do it forever. Especially women's shelters would have needed a bit more support. But thanks to the more digitized work, it was possible to see regional differences, identify good and bad practices, and react immediately to move forward better. Estonia and Latvia would have needed more support, both financial and non-financial support. What could be done differently next time? Next time, in next crisis, have a plan for how to work in the crisis situation. More attention to people, their mental health. Some legislation still needs to be changed. Official statistics should be better available to get better feedback. Information between different work areas and between different levels within one field should move more quickly. And key people to crisis management positions should be carefully selected. In the crisis situation, in addition to people's professional abilities, their personal qualities also reveal very well. It was noticed who was cooperative and helpful and who was just looking for an easier way how to get through the crisis as comfortably as possible. And to sum it up, someone in a group said so nicely about the future plans. In this crisis, we built a ship. In the next crisis, we would like to start sailing it. And it was proposed that someone should write a book about their experiences during the crisis and let others know how to cope better, how to reach out to victims and perpetrators in times of crisis, how to organize the first date for new employees, for new clients and new victims in the crisis situation. So oh, that's it. Thank you. Would anyone like to ask something? <laughs> Any questions? Uh, did any of you participate in our focus group discussions? No? You did? <laughs> oh, nice. Perhaps you would like to add something. Most probably I didn't uh, tell about uh, everything you spoke in the groups. <laughs> we just didn't have that much time. Well, as, it, uh, as the focus group itself was rather short, then of course we didn't have time to very um, intensively like uh, analyze all the changes um, due to the pandemic. But uh, I really liked your presentation, thank you, because uh, I think the way that you summed up the differences in, uh, in the countries that came out of these interviews was uh, very uh, 
it, w it was very good uh, to have this overview. And um, well, we'll see. Uh, we hope to read the um, um, written report as well to uh, uh, to find uh, find more there. Yes, this is just your uh, your thoughts, your opinions, because I only reflect back uh, what you spoke about, uh, how you criticized, what you suggested. Um, I didn't add from my side anything. So here is some criticism. Here you praise someone. Uh, it, it, it is life. Uh, it is just so. Uh, uh, so <laughs> how to say? Mm -hmm. It is. Uh, Spontaneous, spontaneous life. But can you can I ask you a question? As you are not um, like in the, wor working in this field daily, um, then we might consider you as a, as a re regular citizen in in that sense. So, what was the feeling that you got uh, from from making this survey? So, um, what were the like the main takeaways uh, for yourself? It seems to me that the crisis still goes on. Now we have another uh, worry because of this war, <laughs> and especially this mental health, mental health of, health of people, victims, children. It is felt that um, we somehow need to uh, to communicate more. Face-to-face uh, -face communication should be more used. People really need more speech. They do not need that many telephones and uh, internet platforms. This makes them lonely and cruel. They don't understand each other anymore. I think that it is time, you young people, you should go back to face-to-face uh, -face conversations. Does anyone else have a question or a comment? Hello, my name is Vida. Uh, I'm representing Nordic Council of Ministers' Office in Lithuania, and thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, my question is uh, about uh, information campaigns, uh, because uh, as we could hear from uh, uh, the participants, uh, that uh, uh, it was not uh, designed and probably didn't reach out. Uh, um, the most vulnerable, uh, did they uh, specify what could have been uh, other ways uh, to uh, design information campaigns? Uh, did uh, the interviewers mention? Yes, again, this face-to-face uh, -face, um, conversation and contacting, because um, uh, people belonging to ethnic minorities uh, uh, Many of them just do not have possibilities to reach internet, to reach uh, quick and proper help. Perhaps they even live in their own uh, systems where they even do not understand that uh, they live in violation situation. Uh, that means that uh, though we do not want to speak Russian anymore, but uh, <laughs> At least in Baltic states, uh, we must approach uh, the people in, in Russian, too. Uh, thank you very much for an interesting presentation. I'm representing Panafrid, the Swedish National Competence Center Against Violence Against Children. And um, uh, this crisis and the ongoing crisis, now it's the fourth year starting with different kind of crises, is a kind of stress test for the society, isn't it? And uh, it, But it is also at the same time a possibility to reform to the better. And what is your impression based on these interviews that what are the key societal elements that we should improve really to guarantee that we have a system that is made for uh, to, to stand even in the times of crisis. You touch a little bit upon the role of the school. I think that everyone has understood already that schools should be as open as possible. Uh, of course, I just uh, learned that um, children are very protective as to their families and um, their parents. 
they are ashamed to report domestic violence. And uh, even when these uh, schools are closed and uh, they are at home, they do not have anyone to turn to. Yes, we have these helpline numbers and special child protection places, but still, when they are there alone in their homes, they are ashamed, they do not report, they do not announce. That means that first, children must be at school. Or <laughs> Was, it, was this uh, your question, how to... Uh, I'm just saying that that was the recommendation from our competence and the government because we were considering the schools the only place where everybody is yes. and who, which can survive um, or support uh, with the food and education and information and social contacts and healthcare and uh, personal with mandatory reporting. So we were considering and reasoning that if you close the schools, you shut down the societal network and it's very difficult to build up anything else that could provide the same services. Yes. And, and I think that we need still more analysis uh, about these roles and how now when even the economical crisis is ongoing, that we are not starting to cut from schools and kindergartens, because then we can end up in a situation that, that we cannot really manage to support the children. And we were also discussing that children is very, uh, when children are in schools and kindergarten, that is also supporting the parents, because they can get food and, and parents can walk, uh, work, work during, uh, during those, um, hours and and also if there is something going on with the families there is somebody who is monitoring the kids situation and also seeing the parents while, while they are bringing the kids to the kindergarten or school yes during the pandemic many parents were unemployed they lost their job and uh, that's why they became more violent and of course children felt sorry for their parents uh, they had no work uh, and uh, they just didn't uh, want to bring out their worries from homes. Thank you once again. Thank you.